Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to this rather short K-News episode 52. SpaceX is at it again with a white falcon. Its first stage booster will attempt to land as usual but this is the first non-experimental landing. At least they left the word experimental out of the description for the first time. Should this be true and not just an error, this landing will count as a needed success. A failed landing would be a real loss for the company since it will from now on need the landed boosters to reuse them. As you might have heard, SpaceX just recently tested one booster which went through the maximum stresses for a full duration burn and they plan to do it many times, probably until it fails to see how much it can really handle. The launch is scheduled for Sunday morning, 5.26 UDC at Cape Canaveral which is at night locally. So you either have to wake up early or stay up longer to see it. Once Falcon has cleared the towers, it will turn eastwards to achieve a geosynchronous transfer orbit. A little over one minute into the flight, the rocket will feel the maximum forces acting on it. Having passed this region, the most dangerous and slightly unpredictable part is over and it will be ready for separation. Since it is a high speed launch, the booster will stay attached a little longer than last time and will later attempt to land on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. This will happen while the upper stage continues with its mission and I highly recommend to watch both available live streams to get the most camera angles. I will of course link them in the description. The payload is JCSAT-16 and the name might sound familiar if you follow my series a little longer. I covered JCSAT-14 3 months ago and this one is pretty much the same. It was built by the Californian company SSL for the Japanese satellite operator JSAT Corporation, so the name probably stands for Japanese Communication Satellite. What JSAT does is basically take the risk to launch a satellite to then rent it to others, generating income. The more satellites they have, the more money they make and that is probably not little since space is still not easy accessible. Now before I go on, a little shout out to my patrons. These people support my little crowdfunding campaign and while it's optional, it definitely helps not only financially but also motivates a lot, thanks. If you want to be one of them, just follow the link in the description. Meanwhile, the boost has rotated itself and performs a quick re-entry burn. The speed is still so high that parts of its tiny wings even start to glow from the heat. Doing the burn not only slows the rocket down but also pushes the hot compressed air out of the way slightly which might actually act like a heat shield, although latter is just a guess and not based on an official statement. Once in the lower atmosphere the booster will aim for the ship and hopefully perform a flawless landing to meet SpaceX secondary objective. The primary is of course the satellite which will be released after a coasting phase followed by the second burn to put it in its desired transfer orbit. If everything goes according to plan, it will then perform its own maneuvers to reach a circular orbit and not directly begin its job since it's an on-orbit spare satellite. Should one of JSAT's satellites begin to fail, JCSAT-16 will simply replace it and the other will be moved to a graveyard orbit just a few kilometers higher. Okay, that shall conclude K-News episode 52 about Falcon 9 and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.